welcome you back to another look, another survey of the book of Matthew. And today we're in chapter 22, Matthew chapter 22. So if you would take a Bible, join me and let's uh, take just a moment to peruse this chapter, find out what's happening and maybe uh, set it against a backdrop. We know that in the immediate preceding chapters, Jesus is being rejected and we're at uh, coming to the close of his earthly ministry. We say earthly ministry, the three and a half years that uh, Jesus preached and taught and healed and did messianic miracles and everything involved in his ministry on earth is coming to a close now. And so he's pressing in. There is a pressure uh, mounting on the heart of Jesus. And he's going to start, uh, I like to refer to it as the escalation of importance and priorities. He's prioritizing. He's getting the main information now. All of it has been important. But to this point now, in chapter 22, there is... A, uh, a concerted effort among religious entities, something called the Herodians and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We're going to see them uh, present themselves to the Lord in this chapter. And then he's going to come back to identity. So let's begin in chapter 22 and verses 1, <clears throat> one through... 40, 1 through 40, those first 40 verses are, uh, are is one picture. Uh, and it's P Jesus interacting with people who have come to him. So first of all, let's break down the wedding feast, the parable of the wedding feast, 1 through 14. And verse number 14, if you'll take a look at Matthew 22 and 14, for Many are called and few are chosen. We've heard this now two other times in the book of Matthew, maybe three other times. Uh, Jesus is wanting through these parables to communicate to his disciples <clears throat> that everybody has an opportunity. Many are called, but it's that it's that discipleship decision to be a chosen vessel of the Lord. And uh, that's the most important. And in this parable of the wedding feast, again, Jesus is going to show how that everybody came ready except one person. They came and uh, weren't prepared with a wedding garment. And he's going to break down that concept to us in the parable of the wedding feast. Then verse 15 through verse, let's think 15 through 40. This is three different groups coming to him. Um, first of all, it's the Herodians in verses 15 through 22. They come to Jesus and they question his um, relationship with government. And they ask him, is it lawful to pay your taxes, what we would think, pay your taxes, give tribute uh, to the government, uh, Caesar. And Jesus is brilliant, of course, and teaches them a powerful lesson about the relationship with government, priority. <clears throat> and then in verse 23 through 33, he's interacting with a group, a religious group called the Sadducees. The Sadducees were a religious branch of Judea Judaism that uh, did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus, of course, is going to teach them about uh, the resurrection of the dead and question their position. Then in verse 34 through 40, he's interacting with another religious group called the Pharisees. And, of course, they come to him, and as they question him, they're, they're wanting to know uh, if he's going to breach the Old Testament commandment of keeping God first. 
And so they say, what's the greatest commandment? And uh, Jesus uh, then teaches them about that great commandment. And flowing right out of that, verses 41 through 46 wrap up the chapter. And Jesus is going to ask them the question, who is Messiah and whose son is he? Who is Christ? Who is son? Whose son is he? And what a brilliant follow-up. They've been asking him questions, and now Jesus, it's his turn to ask them questions. And of course, I love the close of chapter uh, 22 because it, it again brings back the power of Jesus Christ to silence religious arguments that are in error. And if you'll look at verse number 46 there, and no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forward ask him any more questions. Jesus silenced, in chapter 22, he silenced these religious communities using the Word of God about their particular religious issue, resurrection of the dead, interaction with government, and then keeping the greatest commandment as priority. So I wanted to spend a few minutes with you traveling through chapter 22, and I trust that when you look at this, you'll break those parts down, and your survey of Matthew 22 will be a blessing to you. God bless you. Go and have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.